Yo, 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 NYKA31 here, Madden 19. Stock playbook challenge slash review. Here are the current rankings. We're, what, we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven deep now. Moving right along. We're on the Chargers now. And we've been on a nice little mini roll of fun playbooks, Bucks, Cardinals. And I got to say, I really enjoyed the Chargers playbook as well, all things considered. Kind of an underrated, under-the-radar book. I know um, some guys in the Playbook GG forums um, like it. I know Zan likes it a lot as well. Zan's liked the Chargers Playbook quite a bit the past couple of years. And, you know, it hasn't really quite caught on in the mainstream, you know, popular playbooks, so to speak. But got some good stuff. And this first game is going to be a good game to, you know, talk through because we're going up against the 335 nickel meta and... You know, it's just, it's an annoying meta. It's a really powerful meta for a variety of reasons and really kind of um, limits the things that you can do. You got to be on the lookout for the blitz at all times, of course, and, you know, various man, cross man, zone combinations. But the issue here, here is what you see is that guys like to spread the line and put safeties at backers so you have insane speed. And you think to yourself, okay, I should be able to muscle that front pretty well like we did with the strong power there. Because you're going to have numbers in the box to the direction they're running in. But, you know, with pistol plays, the handoffs aren't nearly as fast as they are in the um, under center or um, shotgun variety runs. And you have some issues here. But this uh, pistol um, trips tight end formation is not awful. It's pretty good as far as pistol sets go. As you see me um, working in a pistol trips, I should say. Run a little smash there. You got wide receiver screen and bubble screen. That, yeah, I couldn't really run against this user because he was always playing on the trips side. I didn't want to you know, run the risk of you know, him being able to read the play since it does kind of tip its hand pretty early. You see him going to audible out of it here. And we're going to go with the dive. And again, soft box. This is the kind of stuff that should be happening to it. I just wish a pistol handoff were much more um, fluid. I got a good second level by my guard there. And, you know, if that was a normal inside zone, I might still be running, but alas. So we're going to stay in this, these pistol sets here. And again, the pistol wing and the pistol trip set that this playbook has is a... It's not... I mean, the pistol wing is not that great. We have those dreaded auto motion plays, but, you know, they're not horrible. Usually I junk a pistol set after a couple of plays, but you hear, see here I'm living in it pretty nicely and doing some things. The passing plays out of it, they leave a lot to be desired. But, you know, what can you do? And again, he's just going to be in set it and forget it, 3-3-5 nickel. Well, I shouldn't say set it and forget it. He's going to play some games with that uh, nickel corner. He's gonna, sometimes he's going to man him up. Sometimes he's going to blitz him. Sometimes he's going to spy him. Sometimes he's going to bring the backer on the same side. You know, all that kind of stuff that you got to kind of watch out for. And, you know, the real issue against this set it's not the coverage. It really isn't. The coverage is pretty straightforward as far as, you know, you just find your best one-on-one -on -one matchup to try to get guys in space and you throw the damn ball. The issue is protection and run blocking. You see me on this drive getting pretty decent second-level um, play out of my guards that are going to be uncovered in this set. And an inside zone running scheme is pretty simple. I mean, if you're not covered... There's no need to, you know, tandem block. You just run to the second level and start picking off linebackers. Same thing with a power run scheme. If this game had pin and pull logic, the uncovered lineman would pull and help create a convoy. There, I didn't mean to um, cut that up that sharp. That was on me there. That was some, you know, bad one cut fortune and there I get blown up from the backside so again I get cover two running power you get destroyed from the backside of the play that's just not good so we turn the ball over and downs so again I'm trying to get a look here that I feel safe given that uh, wide receiver screen a shot but I'm not going to risk him being able to shoot over there with a user control player so we're going to go back to smash smash will always work against cover two he mans up the corner guy the um tight end comes in and breaks open late over the um cloud flat corner but i 
decided to take off and run before that happened and gained eight yards. Gun doubles. You got a gun doubles and you got a gun doubles week. Which is always nice and they're both, you know, fairly useful. Sometimes when you have a gun doubles and a gun doubles week, one is good, one is poor. Both of these are pretty nice. We're going to go with HB angle. I'm going to hit that fade here to your left. And you can always drag that receiver to the up angle side to get a nice little high low. And that fade gets into that little sweet spot, that little turkey hole spot in cover two. We're able to hit that bad boy with Mahomes. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Back to back good plays. Not a bad book. Not a bad book at all. And again, soft box inside zone. But you're going to draw there. And McCaffrey's going to fumble. Christian McCaffrey and these fumbles, man. He has been a fumbling machine. Complete fumbling machine. Single back. You got your single back. Um, wing slot. You have your doubles. You have your ace. We're going to go back to doubles a week this time. Got double post here. I'm not going to run that right now. I'm going to run that a little bit later. But, again, try to run with some muscle here. You got... Four blockers against three men to that play side, and again, we get destroyed. Dax Cypress, who can be a real witch in this game at times. I play action read, and here I'm going to make a mistake. Again, he's going to be playing in cover two the entire game, and he gets me the user here. I could have looked again to when that hard flat or the cloud flat pulls down for the deep comeback here, but I thought I had it, and again, we've all made this mistake before. I mean, it's it's going to happen. You just a guy made a good play there, you know. Tip your hat and move on and just be more careful next time. We've all made that play. We've all, you know, thrown that INT. Good play. Tip your hat and move on. Next drive, I'm going to dial up a similar concept here. Going to go Y cross with that uh, post square run combo. This time I'm going to hit the um, whip route. I saw him peel back there, so I didn't want to risk a square run and... Jerry Rice gets some auto spins and away he goes. So a good doubles week and gun doubles set. Can't really complain about either one of those. Y trips. Get your standard Y trip stuff. You got the useless HB counter, which I'm going to run a little in a little while, so you'll see how just how useless HB counters are. But you know, dig concepts are always nice. Cover two beaters. Again, got to look out for the blitz. He's not blitzing. I'm going to just go quick to, quick to the flat. Get what I can get. Play some tempo here. See, I'm down 14. Nothing didn't get off the very good start this game at all. Again, going to try to run some power. See if the pulling lineman cooperates. He falls right on the ground. He's pulling lineman, man. There. Once you get these linemen on the move, pulling, it's a complete and utter crapshoot. Standard four verts. He's likely not going to stay in that corner. He's probably going to if he if he stays on him, he's going to drop back and cover, which he does. So that opens up all kinds of space for McCaffrey. Hang on to the damn ball and no fumble, and, and he you know and he does. So on the march here, wide corner, but we're going to go a little bit with a backside constraint here. We're going to change that um, out route, which is way too slow to a. Wheel to kind of create a back receiver uh, switch concept and just get him out, get him out there quick, and get out of bounds. And we're going to end up having to settle for a field goal here to get some points on the dang board going into the half. You know, game doesn't have a whole lot of constraint plays. The core concepts we got to create our own. That's just the way it is. I was having a conversation with a guy who I was playing. Um, who has been following me for a while who I ran into in weekend league and we we're talking about the same exact thing, you know. <laughs> he gave me props for being crazy enough to do this experiment. But um, again we came to this we came to the same, you know, mindset that the fact that the reason why we do what we gotta do as far as creating route combinations and um, all that good stuff is because what we have to work with just isn't that great. Again, getting good inside zone run blocking this game. Part of it is because he's not really doing a good job of mixing up 
run blitzes along with the guy blitzing across the edge. He's just playing Tampa 2 and, you know, taking that middle linebacker in the vertical hook, catching him to a deep blue, and that takes him out of the run fit. So if you don't really uh, shoot the gat with your user or send overloads, you know, if you get cooperation with your lineman, you're going to get gashed. And that's what usually happens when we play <laughs> against this set and we try to run inside. In the real world, if a guard gets his hands on the linebacker clean, it's, the, it's over. The linebacker has to live the fight another day if he doesn't get knocked unconscious. If it defends, and if it's a defensive back, it's really over. But, you know, in Madden, that, not, that is not always the case. Now he's going to start shifting and bringing blitzes here. Inside smash, instead of having a vertical, you're going to have two hitch routes, and Jerry Rice has got to catch this ball. I mean, you're 99 catch, 99 catch in traffic, 99 in every catch stat. I got to have that catch from you, buddy. So, bad break there. Luckily, the bad breaks aren't adding up into more points this game, so we get the ball back. Here we're in wide trips with the tight end detached. Again, he's shifting these guys to the left, so we're going to run away, and now he's trying to shoot the gaps, but we are able to sprint out of there, and we eat another hit stick. My God. So, trips wide flex. Not as good as the um, inline wide trips like this. Sale concept that out route is a little bit too rounded and not really as far deep down the field as I would like. And this should have been a touchdown. If I break that to the left, I'm still running. Bad job on me there. Bad run stick. Give him 12 yards there and the Jets have Trips tight end. You have, you know, a couple of spread sets. You got a good bunch set. Pretty solid book. Really, really solid book. Here we're going to run play action wide receiver screen. And here you're going to see a textbook example of just awful blocking targeting. Awful, awful, awful. This is about as bad as it can get. Mahomes now on first down. Neither blocker picked up anyone. It just ran straight past those guys and went right to the secondary. Not good. They really got to improve that. Zan and Ann Camp did a video on that very thing. It's really, really poor. Outside of route combinations that are actually useful, if you just addressed pass protection and run blocking, you'd see... That alone would give you a lot more variety as far as what you see online head to head offensively. Step up, step up, step up. Flanker dig. Boom. Contrary to popular belief, you can step up in the pocket in Madden. But again, you have to be able to trust your protection. And since that's a dicey affair, what do guys do when a read or two is covered or a play is taking a while to develop? They'll bail out with Vic at the first chance that they get. Wherever the, or whatever mobile quarterback they have, either sprint backwards or sprint wide, whatever. There's counter, and again, you saw if the puller just kept on going on his path, he would have been able to kick that guy out, but no. He just popped the squat and allowed me to get killed. That backside defender's job, his job is to reduce the edge, not get himself kicked out, and allow the linebackers that are pursuing to spill that back right to him. That puller's job is to try to kick him the hell out of there. Going to go back to this flanker dig. This has been giving him some trouble. Again, solid cover two beater, and that's pretty much all he's been playing. And we're just going to go to the um, shallower cross there, running out of time there, so I had to get rid of it. So, tack on another field goal. So, so far we haven't really gotten sacked all that much. We're doing a good job of um, being aware of that corner coming, because if you just leave it alone, that corner absolutely will get by all those linemen. <laughs> Under a four-man rush. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay. Little slot game. trail concept here. This is not the best one in the world. They're too close together. Really easy for a user to guard both. I'm just going to hit the first one here. You see the um, second trail, or the second crosser. He just runs right into a hook. I mean, just a really horrible play. Don't run that play very often. Forever. Now here we're going to go double post. Again, got to make sure we have our protection in order. No one's coming. And there we hit him right on the cut. And you know, every time I'm on the verge of benching A.J. Green because he is slow. I mean, Keyshawn and A.J. Green, 
there in that one's 96 speed, AJ Green, Keyshawn's 97, and in a game where there's so many guys who are 99, 96 and 97 is considered slow. But AJ and Keyshawn, remember on the verge of just saying, ah, screw it, I'm, you know, done with this novelty of using these big slow dudes. They make catches like that, and I change my mind. <laughs> again, we're going to try the screen again. We're gluttons for punishment. And the whole point of this, we, we don't care about winning the game. We're here to show, you know, what in these what in these playbooks work and what doesn't. You know, we're not playing for anything. We're just, you know, demonstrating what's useful in these playbooks and what needs to be improved upon, and we get blown up for a loss. If we win the game, that's great. If not, who gives a damn? Gonna go back to running power. That's why I'm running so much power. <laughs> I know it's a dice roll with the, with the uh, puller, but you know, we'll see what goes. And we get a good run there. Again, he's just say, he's just keeping those defensive linemen spread, and that backer skating out, and those safeties are not being crossed, man. So they're not turning into heat-seeking missiles. So that's when you can get some success. Where this completely falls apart is when those safeties in too deep are crossed, man. And, you know, gaps are being shot with the user. You have eight guys in the run fit, no matter what alignment you're in. And the lineman won't pick them up. when you start, you know, gapping guys and shooting guys with the users and cross-manning people. Four-man rush. We're going to dump it off here. Jerry. I really like Jerry Rice. A lot of people don't like him. I love the guy. I think he's just great. And he plays absolutely great for me. I don't get the ball to him enough, actually. This is one of my best... This is one of my favorite square runs in the entire game. This is the this is the deepest stock square run that I've seen. This play looks... This, this play is one of those plays that's spaced much better on the field than it is in the play art. Triangle's going to sit right at the first down marker, and the square run's going to break all the way in the end zone. We hit Keyshawn in space, but he cannot hang on to the ball. But on the play art, pre-snap, or on the play call screen, that looks like it's really close together. But on the field, it's really nicely spaced. That's an excellent, excellent uh, dig concept. And learning stuff like that just comes through playing the game. You know, some of these plays, they don't, the route depths don't match us on the play call screen until you get onto the field and you, and you find out otherwise. We're going to go right back to the same concept. Again, this has been, you know, pretty reliable the entire game. We're going to change the backside to a post route. Just really occupy his deep user, and boom, there we go. And this is going to be funny. Here I, <laughs> here I inadvertently choose the um, kill clock or a fake spike. And wouldn't you know it, <laughs> it's going to work. <laughs> and AJ comes up with it. So there you go. So I actually missed a two-point conversion. I don't win that game, and that's the end of that. So second game here, going to come out in your standard deuce close stuff. This is the good stick route. Nice and sharp. Hit him quick. Get some rush after the catch. Eat yeah, another hit stick. Our guys are just... At this point of year, just loaded with guys with high hit power and big hitter trait, or have people just said, screw it, I'm just going to play on big hit aggressive? Because my guys are eating hit sticks left and right all game long. All game long. I guess that's why I'm fumbling so much at the right, right now, but, you know, whatever. Counter and blow me over with a feather. We actually get out there. Good user strafe and tackle by uh, Mel Blunt there, or that would have been six. Or a surprise and kind of get out of the backfield. Single back ace. Horrible set for passing. You have stretch dive, you have a 0-1 um, trap. Since you can't really rely on play action, you know, these type of sets will always be limited as far as passing is concerned. I went from one game where a guy was playing 3-3-5, three, three, uh, cover two all game, to this game where he's just playing 4-4, four, four, serial cover three. Why, I don't know. But, you know, guys will do what they do, and you just do what you do. That's my approach to it. Again, he's going to do the same thing. We're going to go with the all reliable single high curl flat beater, or the single high beater curl flat, just, you know, wait for space. And away we go. So once you click the ball down the field, starting out with under center here, just trying to show some under center plays and what the playbook has to offer in that regard. Again, none of these playbooks have super outstanding under center stuff. 
but you know there's some stuff here and there that you can run their wide trips is really pretty good their single back doubles not quite as good he's spreading his linebackers out now so we're going to run the dive right up the middle get to the second level we try to truck here probably a little bit too early on that but you know we got a nice nine yard gain on first down i'll take it here's the wide chips that wide receiver post play is pretty nasty catch and wide glance can be okay you have flash and cross up slot two buck got a nice little variety of plays here that you can run here i'm just going to run power Hope I don't get blown up. Another run. This time McCaffrey. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 30. And we just got a first down. Play action in the zone shot. Jet sore. And this is the freaking holy grail of Madden. <laughs> We're gonna come out on play action uh, shot. Nope. That's gonna be next play. Here we're gonna run we're gonna audible to power. And wow. Andrew Stumble kicks in. This player is going to be on play action post shot. Play action zone shot, I should say. And this is the freaking holy trinity of Madden. We actually get the user to come down on the um, run action. The user gets stuck on the offensive line and he's not able to get back out. He's going to come crashing really hard, really super aggressive. He gets stuck in the blocker. He's not. He comes out, but he's he nowhere. He's had nowhere to go. So we have a nice throwing lane there for the square in, and AJ Green gets those lovely fall forward animations for a touchdown. You know, good concept if you can establish play action, or if you can, you know, get people to bite on play action fakes. You have the uh, deep post on the whole side, the over route by the um, slot, and then the deep square in. That's an excellent play action pass beater. Our play action pass play against cover three. That's how teams like to attack um, cover three heavy teams all the time. The Falcons are famous for doing that. They win those plays all those all the time. Those long developing over routes with that with that square in and the backside post. The play action gets the linebackers creeping up so that frees up space between the linebacker in front of the safety. That's what makes those concepts effective. But in the Madden world, unless you can get a user to play on it hard, you're not going to be able to replicate that. Again. He's in cover three all the damn time, single high, so always bust out that curl combo. That's the cover three equivalent of smash. You'll always be able to hit that against, against single high. Just got to watch out for what depth the um, flat defenders are playing at. Now, these Y ISO sets, you know, the idea of them sounds good. Isolate your tight end one-on-one against a shorter corner, but... Not going to be able to box out people and use your size as an advantage in this game. It's just going to come down to spec catch, catching traffic versus coverage. And on that play, I didn't even get an animation, you know. So the idea of putting a guy like Gronk up against a tiny corner and just throwing bat shoulder phase at him is a good one. Unfortunately, you can't really throw a bat shoulder uh, throw in this game at all. So those dreams get dashed. This game really <laughs> brings you down to earth in a hurry as far as what you can run and what you can't. Spread Y flex. Again, he's just not making that many tweets with coverage at all, so I know I'm going to have that out route there, that deep out. What's that? Seamer gets rerouted. Second able to get back there, so easy first down. This inside cross play out of the um, spread Y flex is only good if the back and the tight end don't glide with each other, which they occasionally do more than you would like to see. When they don't, that happens. When they do, it's a complete catastrophe. It's just one of those, you know, dice roll type of things. And that square end is a little bit too shallow. Not a very good space, not a very well spaced play at all between the shallow cross, the square end, and the post. They're way too close together. And we're on trips tight end. This is not my favorite play in the world out of this set. We're going to drag the tight end here. Again, he's playing so much cover three that corner route could get open there if we run that um, corner off. But I just had to go that route and just, you know, get what I can get. I may have changed that to four verts. No, nope. yeah, well, same difference. Gun bunch. Decent good bunch. You got the flood play there. Dig return. Flanker drive. Mesh spot. We're going to run flanker drive here. 
but still an effective gain nonetheless. Already a pair of third down conversions. I try to get a post route over that um, square in there, along with a post route to the solo side receiver. See where the drops are. We see Keyshawn there inside, but we cannot get it to him. He drops the ball. I end up kicking a field goal next play, and he's going to quit the game. So there you go. That is the Chargers playbook. I really liked it a lot as well. Three playbooks in a row that I really, really enjoyed. I think the Chargers playbook is a very underappreciated playbook in this game. It's a top 10 playbook for sure in my mind. Maybe a fringe top five. I'm going to put it behind the Bucks and the Cardinals, however. I think the Bucks and the Cardinals are better. And we're going to plop this bad boy at number three for the time being. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy. Talk to you all later. Peace.